You know, we talk about change like it's some great big new thing that we've never dealt with before. You know, the change comes, everybody freaks out. Ah, it's change, I don't know what to do. But the truth is, you've been dealing with change since the day you were born. You've been choosing to change since the day you were born. Everybody in this room, every single person in this room, between the age of one and two, went from a crawling being to a walking being. Imagine if you hadn't. Imagine if instead of walking in here today, you had crawled in. You know, never really got around to the whole learning how to walk thing. You know, just couldn't, couldn't fit it in the schedule. <laughs> you know, it's ridiculous, of course. We've been dealing with change since the day we were born, some of them very, very difficult. They get more difficult as you go. So, you know, you went from crawling to walking, walking to running, running to riding a bike, to driving a car, to dating, to maybe marrying and having kids. These changes get more complex as we go, but we adapt every single time. Everybody in here already has all the tools you need to adapt to change. Just need to remember to power up those tools. When the challenge and the change comes, that's when we find out what we're made out of. But when the challenge and the change comes, everybody, first thing everybody does is just freak out, right? Everybody just react. And if you're like most places, people react in one of three ways. No, not now, or yes. So some people in here are over on the no side. You're seeing the big change coming and you're going, nope, nah, not gonna change. Nope, not gonna do that, okay, I don't wanna do that right now, nope. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm fine the way I am. Things are fine. We've been doing it this way for 20-some years now. It's just fine. You know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You can't make me change. Some people are in here are in the not now category. So these people are saying, oh, why do I have to change? This is going to be so hard. I don't want to do this. No, no, it's just going to be so disruptive. It's going to make so much more work. I don't want to do this right now. I'll get to it later. I'll get to it after everybody else has already changed. Then, then maybe I'll change. And some people are over here in the yes camp. And these people are looking at the change and saying, okay, all right, I know it's going to be a little disruptive at first, but I can see where this is going, and I can see how it's going to be a good thing for the company and the industry, and I think we should just roll with it. So we got no, we got not now, we got yes. And as far as how many people are in each one of these categories, it's a bell curve. So the majority of the people are in the middle category. Over here on the no side, you got maybe 10% of the people. They see the change as a threat. About 80% of the people here are in the middle category, and they see the change as a disruption. And then you got about 10% of the people over here in the yes ca category. They see the change as an opportunity. Well, these are the people we're going to talk about today. We're going to find out what makes them tick and the strengths they share that keeps them at the top of their game. In the next 50 minutes, I'm going to show you how you and the people that you lead can be in that 10% yes category that is running while everybody else is just crawling. Three, two, one. <laughs> okay, what are you? Arcade game. Arcade game. What are you? The old man who didn't have a good game. <laughs> what are you? I'm the lane. The lane! What are you? A trophy. A, tr <laughs> a trophy. What are you? I'm an order of fries. An order of fries! Great! Stand back up. Okay, we're going to do it again. Do it again. Do it again. So did you notice what happened when I first said, be something in a bowling alley? They tended to have something ready to go. I say bowling alley, we had bowling pin, bowler something with the word bowl in the title. And by the second round, they still kind of had something, and then it got a little harder by the third round. And then by the fourth and fifth round, we started to get really imaginative options that they came up with. That's because they moved from left to right brain. The left brain will make a list. It'll just go off a list. So you got bowling alley, you think, oh, bowling pin, yeah, yeah. You're not even really seeing it, you're just thinking, yeah, of course, bowling pin and maybe the second round too, but then it gets going, and we get an awkward, like, moving over the hemisphere break, and then once they get to the right side, it's visual, and you can see the inside of a bowling alley, and now the possibilities are sort of endless. We got the door of the bowling alley, the arrow on the lane. I mean, we got imaginative stuff, because they're now working from a visual brain rather than a list brain. That's one of the things 
that people over here that are in this yes track that, that affirm things and move forward, they start to know how powerful the visual brain is for themselves and the people that they lead. It's very persuasive to paint pictures for people. 